Have you noticed that nearly every modern car has a two liter engine? If you have, don't worry, you're not going crazy. Pushed by downsizing engines for the sake of fuel efficiency and lower emissions, car makers have all seemed to converge on the same engine formula, four cylinders with two liters of displacement. And that's not by accident. Being a car maker is big business, and there are millions upon millions of dollars poured into engine research each year. That means eventually there's going to be a conversion point where the theory, the engineering, and the business all come together to create an engine that is the theoretical most efficient. The math behind engine design doesn't discriminate based on brands. So now that pretty much everyone has access to top-of-the-line research facilities, everyone seems to have converged on the same answer. The answer they had found, for better or for worse, was to create their new engines with a ratio of 0.5 liters per cylinder. This ratio is ideal for a few reasons. It's sort of a sweet spot where the volume of the cylinder is kept decently high while the friction between the piston and the sides of the cylinder walls is kept pretty low. This sizing also contributes to a consistent burn within the chamber where the air and fuel can mix together perfectly. But what higher ups at car companies probably like to hear most is a different non-scientific reason. You can share parts across engines with different cylinder counts. Think of the BMW B58 and the B48. All the individual parts for the cylinders are interchangeable because every single cylinder is just 0.5 liters. So why would companies ever stray from this formula? To answer that question, we have two options. We can take a deep dive and look at the bore, the stroke, an over-square engine, an under-square engine, and how all of those factors come into play and affect engine characteristics. Or we can just massively oversimplify to keep things simple. Let's do that. Like I said before, there's a bit more nuance to it, but typically engines that have a small displacement per cylinder count are engineered for high performance or racing use. It's easier to rev higher and make more horsepower if the parts that are moving are smaller and therefore lighter. You'll lose out on low end torque, but these kinds of engines are typically used in lightweight vehicles that aren't really concerned with moving slowly. On the flip side, engines with a high displacement versus their cylinder count are used where that low end grunt is pretty much all you need. Think about off-road vehicles or trucks that need to tow heavy loads. You're not as concerned with top speed, but you are concerned if you can get up that steep grade from a dead stop. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the cars that stray the furthest from this golden rule of half a liter of displacement per cylinder. With some ground rules, of course. We're only going to be looking at street legal passenger cars and trucks from the post-war era, because before that, they were throwing stuff to the wall and seeing what stuck. Without further ado, let's get into the list, starting with the smallest and largest displacement four cylinders. The smallest displacement per cylinder for a four cylinder comes from a tiny truck from Japan, the Honda T360. Technically a K truck, which are now limited to 660 cc's of engine displacement, this was made back in the day when they were limited to only 360. That's 0.36 liters in total for a per cylinder displacement of 0.09 liters. The largest displacement four cylinder ever sold was the Pontiac Tempest Trophy 4 with 3.2 liters of displacement from its four cylinder engine. The engine used was quite literally Pontiac's famous Trophy V8 that was then chopped in half and still left at its 45 degree angle. This big displacement engine was prone to shaking itself to death and was only offered for two years. Moving on to six cylinder cars. Sorry five cylinder guys, they're just not popular enough. The smallest six cylinder ever offered was the 1.8 liter V6 that was found in the Mazda MX-3. It was made this way to bypass a road tax in Japan for cars above two liters of displacement, but it's pretty wild that you could get the same amount of displacement with two less cylinders in the far more popular Miata. The largest displacement six cylinder is also found in the largest vehicle that's on this list. That's the 6.7 liter Cummins straight six that was offered in the Ram 2500 and 3500. This is slightly cheating because diesels tend to have a slightly higher displacement per cylinder than their gasoline counterparts, but at over one liter per cylinder, it just had to make the list. Eight cylinder engines are known for being huge, mostly thanks to the influence of American muscle cars. But they also came in small portions, thanks to the Italians, with both Ferrari and Lamborghini offering a two liter V8 in the 208 and the Uraco, respectively. The largest V8 ever offered is somewhat infamous today, mostly due to the insane lack of power it made. The Cadillac 500 offered a 8.2 liter V8 that put out a whopping 
190 horsepower. Yikes. V10s are pretty rare to be offered in production cars, so much so that you probably know and love both of these cars listed. This is also where the adage of the more displacement means less sporty kind of falls apart because most cars with 10 or more cylinders are already performance oriented. The smallest V10 is also one of the best sounding cars ever made, and that's the 4.8 liter V10 that's found in the Lexus LFA. It's also not that far off from having that half liter per cylinder that would put it at a five liter V10, which is really more of a testament to show how few V10s were actually produced. The largest V10 is thankfully way above the five liter mark, and that's the 8.4 liter V10 that was found in the Dodge Viper. Insert bald eagle noises here. Finally, we have V12s. Known for their refinement and performance, they've been offered in many famous cars over the years, with both the largest and the smallest offerings both found in Italian supercars. The smallest offered was a two liter V12 that was found in the Ferrari 166 Inter, which is commonly known as their first Grand Tourer. The largest V12 has a bit less Italian pedigree as it's a 7.3 liter unit that was sourced from AMG. But the absurd styling and performance of the Pagani Zonda that it powers more than makes up for that. And that wraps up the list. Were there any names that you were surprised to see on here? And if you think you have a car that has a larger or smaller displacement than any of the cars I listed above, please feel free to let us know in the comments. And if you made it this far into the video, you probably enjoyed it enough to give it a like, and maybe even think about subscribing if you enjoyed it that much. Thanks for watching, and we'll hopefully see you next time.